Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, to another episode of Gates of Goodness, where every night during this blessed month of Ramadan, we'll be seeking new ways to increase in nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll be seeking new ways to enjoin and increase upon goodness. I'm your host, Yusuf Krama, and tonight we will be discussing the going of Ramadan. Our good friend, yesterday, Muslims were seeking the month of Ramadan, we're anticipating it, we're celebrating its arrival, and today we are feeling sad about its departure. SubhanAllah. Ramadan is like always losing a good friend. So today we'll be discussing what happens after the month of Ramadan. We have this month where we all increase and we have this spiritual high. Now this month is leaving and the shayateen will be set free. What do we do after this month of Ramadan? Before we get too deep into our subject, I would like to introduce our noble guest. Alhamdulillah, we have our sheikh all the way from Chester, Pennsylvania joining us today. Imam Farid, who is the imam in uh, Chester uh, of Masjid Sadiqun. Alhamdulillah, he's my personal mentor and advocate. And Alhamdulillah, he's just a, a, a wealth of knowledge, a resource to our community. And it's an honor to have him on the show. I want to begin with greeting him with the greetings of Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. It's an honor to have you, Imam. Alhamdulillah. A pleasure to be here and an honor also. MashaAllah. Uh, secondly, I would like to introduce our brother Ismail Tarawira. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> He's a member of my Madingo tribe, so we're representing today <laughs> on the show of Gates of Goodness. Alhamdulillah, brother Ismail. I recently had the pleasure of meeting him, and I was so excited to learn about him. He told me he's a graduate of Al-Azhar University in Language and Translation, and he's uh, uh, pursuing his master's right now in Dawah. And there's another master's. He's pursuing two masters at one time. So this brother is brilliant. So in my own pursuit of uh, studying at Al-Azhar University, I'm thinking of my brother Ismail, who's doing his thing. So, you know, I'll use him as a mentor, as an advocate, inshallah ta'ala. It's an honor to meet you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Mashallah. Thank you for having me in this program. Alhamdulillah, it's an you. honor. Yeah. And I love the shirt, mashallah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Last but not least, I would like to introduce our veteran of the show, Brother Idris Surat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As, as always, I'm happy to be here, especially next to my friend Ismail, who <laughs> I miss him dearly, and I love, uh, love being on the show with him. Yeah. So. Mashallah. Thank you so much. Allah. So we're going to get right into it, Brother Imam. We have a question. What can we learn from Ramadan passing and coming so fast, leaving so soon? It seemed like just yesterday we were looking for the moon, and now today it's gone. So what can we learn from the, the passing of this month, the struggling of fasting, the late night prayers, uh, all the, the, str the struggles and the tribulations we went through this month? How can we learn from those things, the coming and the passing of Ramadan going so fast? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasuluhu wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First of all, we, should, we can learn uh, gratitude to Allah for allowing us, first of all, to live to see it. And, uh, you know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he said that one of the signs of the last days would be that uh, uh, a year would seem like a month, a month mm -hmm. would seem like a week, and a week would seem like a day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it, it, right now, we're always saying, wow, it's Juma again, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now we're saying it's Ramadan. And now we first we're saying it's here, and now we're saying it's gone. Oh. And so one of the things that we realize that it should make us learn, first and foremost, is that we will one day be gone from here. Mm. And not those who will be, when the month comes back around again, that in the same way that the month passed and left, that we will be those who passed and left. Mm. And so therefore, if we should not take anything that we've been able to gain during this month for granted, and therefore because of that spirit of, of consciousness, that we will take the best effort forward to not lose what we've gained in the month. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to gain this month the remembrance of Allah in an intensified way. It's like an intensified period of, 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 of repentance. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an intensified period of repentance, it's an intensified period of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, therefore, the, the, the prayers that we've been making on time, many of us 
during the year we'll be latched on when we make our prayers we'll miss prayers in Ramadan you're conscious of your prayers mm -hmm. making your prayers on time mm -hmm. and then we're conscious of doing the extra prayers and there's prayers in the Ramadan that you cannot get in any other time there's a, there's a night that's in Ramadan just one night is better than 83 years mm -hmm. just one night of worship in that month and there's no guarantee that we'll ever get to see another one so we have to pray that he bless us to have this one and uh, that the Laylatul the Qadr, that night of power, that night in which the Quran came down. And so that's only in the month of Ramadan. And if you were able to, to gain it, so that means we were in search of that. We were in search of and doing the extras in search of having Allah fortify us with further, further blessings that we wouldn't normally have. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we want to do going forward is still have that same consciousness of obedience to Allah and the same joy and love and seeking Allah's pleasure like mm -hmm. that. Because in the process, all that we were doing, we were seeking the pleasure of Allah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we stayed up later and then at the same time, in the last 10 days, you end up doing, you end up doing the Tarawiyah, Salat, and the Tahajjud. Mm -hmm. So, we pray the Tarawiyah, Salat, then we'll come back later and pray the Tahajjud Salat before the Fajr Salat, and so we're doing the extra like that. Well, now that we go forward in these other months, and there's no guarantee that we're going to see Ramadan come again, mm -hmm. but we can see Tahajjud every night in our own homes, in our own life. We can see it, right? Mm -hmm. We can't see Tarawiyah until Ramadan comes again, but we can see Tahajjud. Mm -hmm. And you can see extra prayers all the time because you can do as much as you want to do. So the extras are always there for you to do in, 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 your, in, in your seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the things that we've come to do, in other words, many people have changed their speech. Mm -hmm. So they used to say, they used to speak with foul tongues. Now they've corrected their speech. They don't use the language of forsook. People were, 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 were not lowering their gaze. Now they lower their gaze. So keep your gaze lowered. And the, the things that you were doing in the way of, of uh, a backbiting and slander, you're more conscious now not to do those things, not to say anything about other people. This, don't, don't backbite, don't slander. If you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. Make that all part of your continual day going forward. Why? Because you, like Ramadan, are on your way back too. Mm -hmm. So it's in a cycle. Our life is in a cycle, and we're on our way back to meet Allah. And there's no guarantee, not that we won't see Ramadan again, there's no guarantee we'll see tomorrow. Mm. SubhanAllah, something I personally took from this month of Ramadan is taking advantage of opportunities. So oftentimes at the beginning of an opportunity when it's presented, we're zealous, we're enthusiastic, we're appreciative. But as time goes on, you begin to lose interest in that opportunity. You forget how pertinent it is. You forget how valuable it is. So the month of Ramadan is very like that, like that in many ways. The first ten days of Ramadan, you're you know at the height of your iman. You're enjoying yourself. You're you're you know enthusiastic. You're zealous and you know seeking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's pleasure. You're praying hard. You're reading the Quran. But as it gets to the twentieth day and the last days, you begin to decline in energy, decline in enthusiasm. And then before you know, the month is gone, and you lost an opportunity to increase in ibadah. So my personal experience, my personal uh, point of growth is to take advantages of opportunity all the way through, 100%. As long as that opportunity is present, utilize all of my resources, all of my energy to maximize the benefits of this blessed month. I'd like to ask Brother Ismail, what are some things you took from the, the, the coming and going of Ramadan in such a rapid way? Um, the Ramadan is one of the pillars of Islam that Almighty Allah commanded us to obey. Mm -hmm. So the month of Ramadan is not only um, the moment of the, the, the 30 days or 29 days or 28 days. Mm -hmm. It's a process of continuous worship. Mm -hmm. Because the purpose we are created for is to worship Allah. Mm -hmm. He says this in the Holy Quran that وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَى لِيَعْبُدُونَ See, the human being it's not created for any other reason except to worship me alone. Mm -hmm. So which means whatever you do, it's just an additional thing that you do. The, pro the, the purpose of creating you is for continuous worship. Because the world itself, you are only for a specific time here. Mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years. After that, you go to a place where you will be forever. You will not die. Mm -hmm. That's why God you know, says that 
I did not create human. I did not create human being except to worship me, mm. not for this world, but for the place that you are going to. And there is also a verse in the Holy Quran where God says, "Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, taqul Allah hakum tuqatihi, wa la tumutuna illa wa antum muslimun." Fear Allah with the strongest of fear. And make sure you do not die, except that you are in mm -hmm. the form, in the complete form of a Muslim. Mm -hmm. So all these verses, with all in the the, the, uh, the the hadith of the, the mm -hmm. holy prophet, all of these things, help the human being to shape yourself, because you are going to a place where you don't know. It's an exam. Mm -hmm. We are preparing all the way. When we get to that grave, we don't know what kind of exam we are going to face here how difficult it is. So we have to prepare ourselves. Mm -hmm. Being a student, I would like to, to give an example here. You know, when you are in the school, in the beginning, sometimes students, they go to school, they stay for the lecture, sometimes they don't stay. Mm -hmm. But in the end, when they know that it's two weeks to exam, they will sit down. They will cut all their affairs, mm -hmm. concentrating. This is ac uh, exactly what happens during the Ramadan. Mm. So they are focusing, they are doing every possible thing because mm -hmm. they need to get excellence. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. This particular effort that they apply during the end of the, the, the school term, if that is the same effort they apply from the beginning, th all of them will come out with excellence. Mm -hmm. So which means the example here that I'm trying to give is if we worship Allah, we increase the effort of worship during the Ramadan. Then we continue with this. Imagine what will happen. How God will like us. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, the month of Ramadan, we, people should understand that it's not only about, you know, within these 30 days. It's a process, continuous process. Mm -hmm. Like the Sheikh mentioned here, there are many people. We are living in countries where people sometimes they are so violent. But during Ramadan, everybody is silent and you know, they respect each other. Let this continue. It's not only about Ramadan. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, maintain good conduct during Ramadan only, and then after Ramadan you go back to where you were, definitely you don't know. Maybe after Ramadan you die, in the, and you definitely are not going to die in the form of, you know, the faith, the iman that you have during the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue the process of being good Muslims. We have to continue the process of giving charity. We have to continue the process of talking to people good, telling them to do good. I think this is actually what will benefit us after Ramadan. Inshallah. You know, a study showed that extreme increase oftentimes lead to extreme decline. Yeah. So if a person goes from not making salat, not fasting, not doing any of these ibadah, to going straight all the way up mm -hmm. to you know doing all these things, the peak, as quickly as they reach the peak, is as quickly they'll reach the decline. So it's uh, oftentimes better and, you know, more and more conducive to your, your spirituality to maintain a balanced growth, a balanced, you know, uh, reaching its peak. So uh, there was one of the, the uh, scholars in terms of being a student, they asked them, yeah, Sheikh, you, you were mumtaz all throughout your years through your bachelor's and your master's program all the way up to your PhD. How many hours of sleep did you use, lose every night? Because how did you be so good? He said, wallahi, I didn't lose any sleep. I slept eight hours a night, minimum. I slept very well. He said, but what did I do? I maintained consistency and my mm -hmm. academic integrity throughout the entire year. So when other students were slacking during the summer, I was studying consistently throughout the entire year. Huh. So when exam times came, I didn't need to cram because I already had it there. I was yes. already studying. So I didn't need to have this extreme increase, yes, yes. really, for the student knowledge because when you increase so much, you lose all your knowledge as soon as the test goes. Anyway. So you don't benefit. So as Muslims during the month of Ramadan, it's best, and this can be our next topic, to prepare for the increase of Ramadan before it even comes, as the Sahaba used to do. So when it comes, we don't have to make extreme changes. Mm -hmm. It's just a bit upping our ibadah, a bit more upping our fasting, because we are already implementing these things. Before we go into such, I want to ask uh, Brother Idris, what can we learn from the coming and the passing of Ramadan so fast? <coughs> Bismillah. Wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Uh, for me, uh, I would just expound upon what was already said a little bit. In the, the biggest thing, is obviously, is that we know the, the, the passing of Ramadan shows you that everything comes to an end. But except Allah, mm. illallah. Mm. So everything will end. Ramadan, uh, everything that exists, everything will exist 
will end one day completely. Mm -hmm. So it's a reminder to us that, you know, sometimes in this everyday hustle and bustle of life of doing, you know, working, studying, you know, hanging with friends, if you have a family, you kind of forget the, the end r reality at sometimes mm -hmm. because it's just normal. You're living your life. This is even, even as Habas used to say, well, uh, one of them would say that I feel like a hypocrite. When I'm with you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, my iman is through the roof, and you know, I'm I'm there. Mm -hmm. And when I leave you and I'm with my family, I lose it. Mm -hmm. So he felt like a hypocrite. And the, and the Rasul so told them that you know you're not a hypocrite. This is normal. If you if you stayed this way like you're with me, the angels would ever would, would descend upon you and talk mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. So things would happen that would normally wouldn't happen. So, anyways, the point is that we know that everything ends. So we have to, you know, I'm not telling everyone to remember death. Every day, every because then you would be uh, uh, life would be unbearable mm -hmm. for you. But you should remember uh, at, at times, you know, as much, as much as you can without making yourself a zombie walking around thinking, "Oh my God, I'm going to die." You know, make it with relative speaking. And uh, the second thing I would say would be uh, Ramadan leaving shows you that it's a confidence booster. Mm -hmm. It's showing that you can. You know, often so many people think, you know, oh. I can't pray, you know, Kiyamalaya. Like, no way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's too hard. I'm working and I have all these responsibilities, my family, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. They can't. But in Ramadan, they do. Mm -hmm. And that tells you that you can. Mm -hmm. So you use Ramadan as a confidence builder that, you know what? Throw the excuses aside. You did it already. You proved it. Mm -hmm. You know, most studies say that to build a habit, you need a minimum to begin a habit 30 days. And what's Ramadan? Days, so, you know, use this habit that you've built mm -hmm. and continue it. If, even if it's not something that you do every day, don't drop it. Mm -hmm. Don't leave it. Keep it as part of your regimen, even if it's for just once a week. Even I tell people, Kimberly, it doesn't have to be just long hours of night where mm -hmm. you're praying all night. Mm -hmm. You can get up half an hour before Fajr, 15 minutes before Fajr, pray two rakahs. This two rakahs will probably be the best blessed two rakahs you've ever mm -hmm. done. You will start feeling a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So I, I, I use it. This passing of Ramadan is a reminder of the confidence. You should be confident that you can, that you can increase your ibadah, even though a lot of times people think they can't. Mm -hmm. And re remember that everything is going to end. So. SubhanAllah. It reminded me of the hadith that taught when, uh, at the, upon the passing of the Prophet Muhammad SAW, right. when people were, were such in a state of shock, Oh, the Prophet Sallam died. He couldn't. It can't be possible. He didn't die, you know. And Abu Bakr really put everyone in check with that powerful mentioning uh, in the, you know, from the verse that whoever worshipped Muhammad know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is dead, but whoever worshipped Allah know that Allah Taala is alive and he never he never dies. He's ever existing. So there are many people in correspondence with Ramadan. Ramadan is gone. I can't believe it's gone. You know, I can't. How am I going to do my ibadah? How am I going to maintain the spirituality? But know that Ramadan is gone, but the Lord of Ramadan is still existing. So we don't make want to make Ramadan a ma'bud, something that we worship. Mm -hmm. We only do ibadah because Ramadan is here. It's like you're worshiping Ramadan. It's not Ramadan, it's the month in itself that makes us fast or that makes us increase the ibadah. It's the Lord of Ramadan. We fast because Allah Ta'ala commanded us to do it. And He said the reason for Ramadan is a prescription so that you may obtain taqwa. Hmm. So it's not that the month of Ramadan makes us more religious, it's Allah Ta'ala. So even though Ramadan is gone, the Lord of Ramadan is still existing. So within that, we have the concept of a Ramadan Muslim, somebody that only does ibadah during the month of Ramadan. And I will not belittle any Muslim. If that's the only time of year that you do so good, alhamdulillah, may Allah Ta'ala keep your affairs between you and Him. But how do we seek to break this idea of Ramadan Muslim, where I only do actions during this month, and for sisters, I only wear hijab during this month, or brother, I only, you know, stop smoking during these particular times, or I only stop drinking from Fajr to Maghrib. How do we break this idea of being a Ramadan Muslim and carry on out these acts of worship through the entire rest of the year? Um, I think first of all is to constantly utter "A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim," mm -hmm. because Allah subhanahu wa taala in the Quran lets us know the number shaitan causes us to forget. And so, in the Ramadan, you know, in this fast, we must first of all remember that the whole creation fasts. 
all of the laws of human beings fast, mm -hmm. whether they like it or not. When you're fasting, you're staying from food, you're staying from drink, you're staying from, from uh, a sexual intercourse with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. You're staying from arguing, fighting, right? Staying from bad language. Well, everybody, the whole world of human beings fast in their sleep. Mm. Right? And so when they wake up from their sleep, there's like there's no argument, no sex, nothing. Ain't in their sleep, there's no argument, no, 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 no disruption, right? They're not eating, they're not drinking. And when they wake up, what they say they're having? Breakfast. Breakfast. Mm -hmm. Right? So that means they just they woke up, they broke their fast. That's a fast that Allah makes the human being have, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affords us the opportunity to have the willful submission to his will for us to fast mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's the Muslim to willfully submit your will to the will of Allah and to bring us into a position where we can have a greater success because what he has called us to do we willfully do it in addition to what we already do and we can't help but do because none of us can escape slumber meaning mm -hmm. we can't escape getting tired mm -hmm. therefore we can't escape getting sleepy and therefore we can't escape going to sleep and therefore we can't escape our soul going back to Allah because he says of all the souls that does not die in the day he takes all the rest in their sleep and of those that he takes in their sleep some of them he sends back for a term appointed and some he withholds so we come back and wake up and see another day and say alhamdulillah like you say wake up there 15 minutes before and do them two rock eyes that's a beautiful thing you get to see or we wake up and realize cousin Ludie Bell or Uncle Gus died in their sleep no that's a soul of law with hell mm -hmm. right in a state of fasting so that means that when we see the things that we were able to gain in that process of fast, like you said, because it's supposed to gain, bring us to taqwa, mm -hmm. brings us to a point where Allah says that he, he doesn't want it to be a hardship for us. He wants to bless us. He mm -hmm. wants us to fast so he can bless us. And it also brings to us, it brings us to the point of having what? Self-restraint. Mm -hmm. So we have the controls. Like you say, the shaitan, he will be loose. He'll be locked up. But nah, he don't have to be loose for you. He can remain in chains for you. Mm -hmm. Because the human being, what it does, Ramadan gives you the ability for you yourself to check the whisper of the jinn in you. Because when Shaitan deals with the human being, Shaitan whispers to the human being through his jinn. So Rasul Islam said, all the human beings have a jinn. So? Mm -hmm. They said, even you, Rasul Islam, yes, even me. He said, but the difference is, my jinn made shahada. My jinn is not in opposition to me, it's surrendered. Mm -hmm. Well, our jinn, the human being, our jinn is always coming in opposition. Shaitan whispered to it, and it goes the opposite. You say you want to do this, it suggests that you might do that. So what we have to do is bring ourselves into being able to have an alignment where yourself checks the jinn and keeps it in compliance that it be in alignment with the soul that's in perfect, perfect proportions that Allah has created and designed it to be because it does not go outside of complete obedience. The soul cannot go outside of complete obedience. The only thing that go outside of complete obedience is the jinn and the self. And so, but Allah permits us, the human being, that you are able to come into self-control that you put your jinn in check and the jinn serves you rather than being opposition to you and you be in alignment with your soul to be obedient to Allah and that's also the alignment of Tawheed. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you, when you look at it in that realm then we see that uh, 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 the evidence for the human being's success is that what? Is it, does it mean that only the Prophet Islam, only him? He's the only one that his jinn can be in check? No. The human being. It says that Umar ibn Khattab ran on him, right? Mm. It says that he was so hard on Shaitan that if he was coming one way, Shaitan would go the other. Mm -hmm. Because why? His jinn was in check. So his self, because when it's like, it's like it says, if you forget Allah, Allah calls you to forget your very own soul because he calls you to forget your very own self. So the greatest thing for the human being, the greatest thing for the self is remembrance of Allah, a taqwa, right? So the consciousness of Allah for the human being 
keeps the self in check to keep the line in proportion of everything else. So the whispers they come, he can say, Oh, the blame is Shaitan al and he can have that check. And the jinn serves him as it goes back to the prophet where the jinns they bought they, they they bought the throne to him, right? So mm -hmm. another the human being was created above all of them. They all had to surrender, so mm -hmm. they all surrendered except the Iblis, right? So the jinn can serve man. It doesn't have to be the opposition to man. It doesn't have to be his enemy. It could be his companion and his and, 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 and his alignment his 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 his, his, his uh, uh um what you would call it when they um uh the 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 worker that works on their behalf mm -hmm. um i'm thinking of the word advocate maybe advocate mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so so in, in 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 light with that when we see how ramadan brings us to that kind of alignment internally that's what it brings us to where you actually you're able to recognize yourself because we are those components yourself your jinn and your soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says of the soul, it never dies, it only gets a taste of death. The self, we can end up doing what? We can end up losing the reality of our existence on this side and the self can suffer in the end. Because in the end, it will be the self, not the jinn, it's going to be the self that heads up, ends up having to suffer because the jinn of shaitan, he's going to say what? When we try to make the, we, we, we try to, to, to uh, uh, um, make the complaint or shift the blame on him as to why me, myself, did this, shaitan will simply say, I had no control over you except to whisper and withdraw. You have to accept that, your own self. And so here we are with Allah blessing us to come into what? Self-control control of our very own self and in that alignment of the self-control when the Ramadan is gone your self-control can't be gone mm. because this is what you're supposed to have gained you have gained the self-control and you should maintain that self-control and you should build upon that self-control that you find yourself getting more better and more elevated that's why it says that a uh, 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 faith is something that rises and falls and that that actually that also comes into where alignment where it's dealing with the self-control that enables you to find yourself rising mm -hmm. in that. And that's for another time for the conversation. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Dear viewers, we're going to continue this pertinent conversation. Right now, we're going to pause for a quick break, and we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Every year during Ramadan, a lot of fiqh questions being raised, such as what happens if I swallow some water by accident while performing wudu, while fasting? Would that invalidate my fasting? Is it permissible to brush my teeth while fasting? And the sisters who ask, is it permissible to taste the food while cooking, uh, while fasting? Would that invalidate my fasting? 
and of course not to forget the typical debate every Ramadan with the gas to Taraweeh, eight rak'ahs or 20 rak'ahs. Shall we make the qunut before ruku' or after ruku'? The witr prayer, is it one rak'ah or three altogether? These questions and many others will be answered insha'Allah during our program Ask Huda, which will be aired during Ramadan every week from Sunday through Thursday exactly at 5 p.m. Mecca time sharp. You can simply call in to drop your live question or you can send your question in advance to my page DR Muhammad Salah official. May Allah the Almighty accept our fasting. May Allah forgive us our sins and may Allah guide us to Muhammad, the most common name in the world. Why were so many parents interested and still are interested in naming the children Muhammad? What are examples of his love, his compassion, his mercy, his dedication, his sincerity, his bravery? How did he balance between private life and the public sphere of life? Why is he known as the greatest mercy sent to humankind? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. join us as we learn more about the balanced and beautiful personality of perfection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers, from our break with our video. Now we're going to continue the very crucial conversation of what to do after Ramadan. Ramadan has come and gone. I wish to increase in nearness to Allah. I wish to still knock on the gates of goodness. So we're going to go to Brother Ismail with the question of what are the things that Muslims in general maintain during the month of Ramadan that are easily abandoned after Ramadan has, uh, has passed? Uh, so thank you so much. And, um, one of the things that Muslims maintain during Ramadan is congregational prayer. So go to the mosque and pray with the people. Mm -hmm. This actually is wherever you go and during the Ramadan you find people, the mosques are full, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody is trying. They know that there is a lot of benefits when you go to pray with people. Mm -hmm. But sooner the Ramadan is gone, if you go to the mosque and like in Fajr prayer or Asr prayer, you find just very few people. Everybody is now busy in their own businesses. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the things that actually people just abandon easily after Ramadan. During the Ramadan, they, you know, they always go to the mosque to pray. They always, some, some people remain in the mosque for, uh, maybe after Zuhur prayer to Asr prayer, reading the Quran, mm -hmm. reciting the Quran. But after Ramadan, everybody f you know, feels like, oh, God has gone. Mm -hmm. So me too, I'm going home. You know? So, so this is a big problem. Mm -hmm. you know? People should understand that the worship they do is not only during the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. The recitation of the Quran, praying in, in, in a congregational prayer. This is not only during the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. It's something that we have to always maintain. Mm -hmm. So if you only, you know, go to the mosque during Ramadan and after Ramadan you don't, uh, you know, you don't go to the mosque. It means, you know, you, you know, you feel like the only time that God can reward me or that I can worship God ac according to is during the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. It's a big problem, you know. So this is one of the things. And the other thing is that, like the, the Sheikh mentioned, is during the Ramadan, people are so kind. They speak to people very mm -hmm. nice. They are not harsh. This is, the, this is you know, the, a, a quality that should continue, not mm -hmm. only with, you know, during the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. It has to be continued. We have to be kind to people. We have to talk to people in a very kind way. Another thing also that I, uh, you know, people abandon easily, given you know, charity to people. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go around, many, in many countries, especially in the Arab world, you find what they call Ma'ira to Rahman. Mm -hmm. These are like um, some tables, you know, they spread food, they, they, they feed the people. Mm -hmm. The same people you give food to during the Ramadan, they exist after Ramadan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you can only feed these people during Ramadan, after Ramadan, you don't give them any more food. Mm -hmm. So it's actually it's strange. So I mean, for those who have money, the wealthy people should understand that the money they give or the charity they give to feed these people during the Ramadan, these same people, they remain, they are their brothers. Mm -hmm. they are, these people are their sisters, mm -hmm. their mothers. They still, they are there, they are in the streets. 
they need I mean, help from them. Continue helping these people because they don't only you know, exist in Ramadan, they continue to exist. We have to help them. So not only in Ramadan. These are the things that I think uh, I should mention so mm. far. Inshallah. Yeah. Brother Idris? Yes, uh, for me, uh, I'm going to say something that I think is very profound and I hope that the audience is listening and, and take heed to what I'm telling you because it's, it's out of sincere. Mm. You know, and most people won't say this, but perhaps two rakahs that you prayed outside of Ramadan can make you more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than everything you did in Ramadan. How so? How so? By your conviction of your sincerity. The fact that, you know, if you're doing something in Ramadan only, how sincere are you if you don't do it after Ramadan? Mm -hmm. It's all about sincerity. Your sincerity will come out in your actions. It, you know, we have different levels of sincerity. You know, a, a strong conviction of sincerity is unbreakable. Mm -hmm. It's the karma, you know. It's unbreakable. Where no matter what comes at you, you you're going to con continue the path. But a weak level co conviction of sincerity, the minute the wind blows, you fall over. So you need to build this istiqama by continuing to do what you do in Ramadan. Maybe you can't keep with the same level. That's unrealistic for some people. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to be realistic. But you should be able to continue some things. For instance, I'll, I'll, I'll give myself advice first. This is for me, not to, to bolster anything. I don't fast easy. Mm -hmm. Fasting isn't easy for me. It's a very difficult thing for me. Mm -hmm. You know, some people fast easy. Some people pray easy. But for me, fasting isn't easy. But I, I, outside of Ramadan, I, I, I want to challenge myself to fast a day or two. You know, not, not necessarily I'm going to fast all year, because in reality, I know this isn't going to happen. I know myself. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult fasting upon me. But I think to continue the spirit of Ramadan, I should fast even a few days of the year. You know, not just, you know, during the Hajj season and all, all these days, but I mean days that are not, you know, common for everyone to fast. Pick a day to fast and try it. You know, or for the person, or even praying in Qiyam al-Layl. You don't have to keep praying every night. I mean, I, I would be lovely if you could, mm -hmm. but reality is most people can't maintain this. Mm -hmm. So pick a day of the week. I challenge them. Pick a day of the week where you wake up out of your sleep and you pray Qiyam al-Layl. It doesn't have to be all night. Mm -hmm. Pray two rakats, simple rakats, however lengthy that you, that you find yourself you mm -hmm. can. Try to do this to try to, bring, uh, to, to um, check yourself in your sincerity. Because when you ask yourself, how sincere are you if you give it all up after Ramadan? Can you really be sincere? I mean, this is between you and Allah. I can't judge you. Mm -hmm. But you have to ask yourself that and be honest with yourself. So that's what I would recommend for people. is to try to grab a hold of something and try to build on that sincerity and, and, and continue it. Because mm -hmm. this is what's going to get you to, to, to please Allah. Is your sincerity. I mean, it's not the, the amount of things you do. It's not like you're gonna, you have to do everything and all these things. It's, it's connected to your sincerity. Mm -hmm. Allah wants you to be sincere. If you can build and make that conviction as strong as possible, this is what made the Sahaba successful. It wasn't always that, you know, all the Sahaba would pray Qiyam al all night. Some of them didn't pray any at all. Mm -hmm. Some would pray just one, two rakahs and go back to sleep. It was their, their conviction of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believed. You know, they didn't have anything to shake them. Nothing shook them. They were pillars. So if you build upon that, then I think you have succeeded. That's what your success comes from Ramadan. Mm -hmm. you, if you want to judge your failure or your, your success from Ramadan, how do you act after Ramadan? Like the brother said, your behavior. Do, is, is your mother, Muslim brother, is he safe from you? Mm. The, 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 the believer is one who feels safe from another believer. Yes. So it, it, how, how do, you, do you bother your neighbors? You know, how, do you care about the well-being of other people around you that you affect, that your behavior affects? So if you want to have sincerity and you want to check yourself and you want to be that, that person who, who really, otherwise, why are you doing it? If you're not sincere, well, what, what's the point? It's not a game. Mm -hmm. So if you want to check your sincerity, start doing these things. Be sincere to yourself. And that's my advice. MashaAllah. Uh, Imam, in your experience, uh, I'm thinking about another act of ibadah, which is uh, zakat. So during the month of Ramadan, you know, uh, at when Eid comes, people pay the zakat al fitr and it's done. You know how I many see people are very enthusiastic for the most part. But do you find, particularly in the West, that people pay zakat 
on a regular that they're as enthusiastic to pay zakat as they would be zakat al fitr No. They're not as enthusiastic. Um, and the zakat al fitr is, is uh, really was in food stuff. So mm -hmm. it's about feeding the people. And now that down there's some some of the schools of thought who are saying that, you know, you could give them the money just to make them uh, 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 able to accommodate themselves on mm -hmm. the, the day of the Eid and they'd be good and enjoy it like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But um, the Zakat, uh, basically, in the Western world, has not even really been established yet. Exactly. And those who are conscious of Zakat, uh, they say that they'll spend it, they're, they're, they're going to send it back to their countries and pay it somewhere else. So the Beit Mal has never really been established in, in, in the countries that we're in. And the people uh, are yet having learned how to even calculate their zakat. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about zakat, just the, 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 if we talk about the, the obligatory zakat for the two point five percent, they haven't calculated that. They're not paying on that, and therefore the beta mile has not been established. And then when you look at the the, the child, the, the sadaka that goes beyond that, the sadaka that's mm -hmm. within the zakat, mm -hmm. and you'll find that they are uh, they they spend more money on social things than they do on the things for the sake of Allah. Mm -hmm. So they'll find monies for the movies, for the restaurant, for two hundred dollar pair of sneakers. They'll find for for the pomp and glitter of all what the social life is for sport and play. Mm -hmm. And then when you ask for some donations for something for the masjid or for the school or for the sake of Allah for something that you're building, it's almost like you have to pull teeth, put some anesthesia on them, and put them in a knockout zone in order to be able to get something from them. Mm -hmm. So so to extract from them. So there. There, this spirit of giving, and the Prophet Islam and this is Ramadan Ramadan, he said, you know, he was like a whirlwind. He gave so much, it was like he was he was just spinning, just giving, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to actually uh, uh, work hard, and I'm speaking to myself first, because mm -hmm. anything that we're saying, like 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 uh, um, uh, Idris just said, mm -hmm. that these things that we're saying is advisement for ourselves first. You know, so these things, we, the, the, these are the things we all have to look at doing better. And I have to look at doing that better because there are many times when someone came by and, and, and they was in need. And so they didn't ask for the $100. Maybe one guinea would have helped them. Mm -hmm. And maybe I had five guineas or I had two guineas. But the one guinea would have helped them and me giving away the one guinea wouldn't have, wouldn't have disturbed or hurt me. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and perhaps that may have been a test coming to you that Allah sent to you to see... Are you really one that's generous and open-handed? Mm -hmm. Are you really the one that's, 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 that, that's the giver? You know, because one of the things we deal with this cat, the Prophet Islam said that the greatest charity is to feed a hungry stomach. So do you have to be wealthy to feed a hungry stomach? Or can you be with somebody that's hungry and you, 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 you got some dates, right? And you got a few of them and, you, and you, you're not starving so you eat all of them, but this hungry stomach, he can use those dates. Mm -hmm. You could just you have an opportunity to do the greatest charity, not because of your wealth, but because of what's within your hands that you can pass on to someone else in the process of sharing, of loving for your brother, love for yourself, and also being conscious of what Idris just said, the neighborly needs. Mm -hmm. Are are you concerned about those that surround you? Mm -hmm. So no, this is something that we have to we have to do, and I see across across the across the uh, the Western world, especially in America, among the indigenous, when it comes to uh, the charities, it's almost like you gotta. In the old days, we used to, they, used to, we used to, they used to lock the door mm -hmm. and say, nobody leaving. Mm -hmm. And empty your pockets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, so it's like, now you got you to gotta beg. Where the times of Islam, they were bringing it willingly. Right. They, they were like in a race to bring it. So it's like, you know, Umar said he brought half of everything he owned. Mm -hmm. And then they was, but him and, him and Abu Bakr was always in competition. Mm -hmm. They went to see what he brought. He brought everything. What did you leave your family? I left them alone as messenger. Mm -hmm. And then we learned that, no, you leave your family a third. Because Rasul Islam had to make it sensible for him. Because he, had, he went straight to the roof with it. I mean, I bought everything. But that's the sincerity that they had in seeking to be pleasing to Allah. Because it all belongs to Allah, right? Yes. So, yeah. therefore, if we use it for the sake of Allah, we'll find great reward because we did that. Inshallah. So, I bring this topic up in terms of establishing the pillars of Islam. Just like Ramadan is a pillar of Islam, Zakat is a pillar of Islam. So when we think about Brother Idris made a very crucial point about the two rakats outside of Ramadan being just to be even more valuable than praying Tarawih or Ramadan. But let's talk about something that should be established, if nothing else, during the month of Ramadan are those things which are the wajibat, which is salat. Even if you're not fasting, the supererogatory, you know, fasting, if you're not praying Qiyamul Layl, make your salat, your five daily salawat. It's a pillar 
So those are the five things. And even that we mentioned with Sheikh Suleiman in the previous episode about uh, the, for the person who prays Salat al-Isha in congregation, it's like he prayed a portion of the night, half, half of the night. And the person who prays Salat al-Fajr in congregation, it's like they pray the other portion of the night. So it's like you pray all night during the, you know, uh, the night just by praying, establishing the Salat in the Masjid. So things like, you know, establishing your daily salawat. Ramadan should condition you enough to just pray your five daily salawat. If you don't do anything else from the sunnah, alhamdulillah, you pray your five daily prayers, it's something exceedingly important. Establishing the zakat. If you can put so much effort in getting a reciter and getting the people to stand during the month and raising so much, so many monies during the month of Ramadan and paying zakat to the fitr, the same emphasis should be put within paying zakat. Which is which is wajib. So yeah. we you know we don't have these things with people begging. If we establish bait al it solves those problems. So you know just uh, some some closing advice. We have about five four minutes left on how someone can move forward and you know and sort of preserving the things that they got during the month of Ramadan. So a bit of advice, inshallah ta'ala before we go. Yeah, I would li um, like to advise our audience that uh, Ramadan is not the only month that they should uh, maintain the the worship as you know god you know describe everything in the holy quran mm -hmm. they should understand that the process of worship is throughout their lives mm -hmm. you know like we <coughs> we spoke about the solar solar is wajib mm -hmm. it's obligatory there is no argument about that so is obligatory no argument about that mm -hmm. The hatch, if you if you have the possibility, mm -hmm. so all the things that these are obligations on every single Muslim, mm -hmm. there is no way you can abandon them. Mm -hmm. You understand? God says, "Inna lazina aman wa amilu salihat." Yeah, ati Allah wa ati Rasul. So all that the prophets did, you know, if we can follow, we can do the same thing that the prophet mm -hmm. did. Of course, we cannot be able to do actually what he did, mm -hmm. but that let's try to, you know. To increase our iman, mm -hmm. let's try to, to, to continue doing the good things that we've been doing during the Ramadan. Mm -hmm. I, this actually can deliver us from many you know, issues. By the way, people during the Ramadan, they don't have much problems like they have problems after, after, after Ramadan. Sure. So if you actually keep on doing the same things that you have been doing during the Ramadan, you are going to be free of, you know, from all the problems. You know. So I urge uh, my Muslim brothers and sisters to continue being good. To continue, at, at least like my, my brother said, we have the fast of like uh, Mondays and Thursdays. These mm -hmm. are very much important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. they can uh, continue fasting these two days or even three or four days as they are able to uh, after Ramadan. Mashallah, mm -hmm. thank you for your uh, very beautiful answer. We're going to close out with Dries with some comments, Mashallah, some brief comments. Um, just briefly, because I know we're running out of time, I would say is that I would advise people to push themselves in their weak points. Mm -hmm. If fasting is difficult for you, pick a day or two to fast a month. Or if, if, if you find yourself being stingy, then pay your zakah and give in sadaqah. Mm -hmm. So that you free yourself from these, these ills, these, these uh, diseases in your heart. Because mm -hmm. if you don't you know, face them, they're going to build and, and sister and, and grow in, inside you without any uh, you know, uh, accountability. So it's up to you to do it. It's not like you know, no one's going to put a gun to your head and make you do it. If you if you really want good for yourself, then try to you know, push yourself into your weak points. That's what I would advise after Ramadan. It's not like it, in advance so many things, but you know find the weak points and do a little by little as you can, so that it can be consistent and sincere. And don't tell anyone. Mm. Keep it between you and Allah. That's my last advice because sincerity. If you keep it between you and Allah, it will keep your sincerity, you know, intact. Inshallah. Inshallah, I would like to thank our guests, thank Imam Farid for coming all the way down here to be with us and sharing your beneficial knowledge. I want to thank Brother Ismail for benefiting us and Brother Idris consistently being a veteran on the show. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, may Allah bless you uh, and increase you for this and accept all the things that we talked about on Gates of Goodness. And Allah Ta'ala accept and allow us to enter the Gates of Goodness, Inshallah Ta'ala, which we perceive as Jannah, the ultimate Gate of Goodness. We ask, uh, thank the dear viewers for watching and joining us in the discussion. For those who called and contributed, thank you very much. May Allah Ta'ala accept your consistency and your deeds. Uh, we're going to close the show out. We reached a sad time again. 
I'm your host, Yusuf Karma, and we are watching Gates of Goodness. May Allah bless you all and your families. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.